ladies and gentlemen, John Montgomery of Montgomery and the Phoenix Holding Company. How's it going, buddy? It's going good, brother. I'm glad to finally be here. Man, it is, it's good to have you up yeah. here. Uh, hopefully next time we can get the full band. We were talking about them yeah. guys uh, right before we hopped on air. Who all is in Montgomery and the Phoenix Holding well, Company? Well, we got Kevin Cool, the legendary guitar player from Eastern Kentucky. He's played with everybody. Everybody loves his playing. He's just wild. We got Sean Hunt on drums. And he probably would have been here today, except he's really wanting to get vaccinated. Yeah, yeah, I and understand. He's carried this this far. He's he's going to carry it the last few feet, I suppose. Yeah. And then we got Mark Chaney. He, he plays bass with us the majority of the time. And he's in Mirrored Image, another great band. They got yeah. top five um, pop band. I seen that. Yeah, man, that list of the Appalachian Arts and Entertainment Awards, for the people that don't know what we're talking about, buddy, that's a long list. I can't keep up yeah. with like all the categories and who all is in there. I, I just say congratulations to everybody because I can't keep up. I wonder what the process is getting to that. I guess they get together with a committee or what, but... Well, from what I've heard, uh, it's a big deal because they, they're doing the entire Appalachian area. Mm-hmm. So it's like 14 states or something like Jesus. that. I mean, it's a lot of people that are yeah. in on this. And, yeah, I, I couldn't imagine being in that no. uh, voting committee or however they go about that process. But yeah. it's cool that they're doing it. Yeah, and I'm super happy for Mark. Mark, super talented guy. He comes from a talented family. His brother, John Chaney, produced the first album. Of oh, ours, really? He's I a savant. He can play anything. Mark can play anything. His father is also named John. He grew up with Kevin Cools. How we got that connection, and he can play anything. Hmm. And they just—I'm just glad, man. They've been putting out a lot of good music for a long time. I really like Mirrored Image. I like a lot yeah. of their stuff. Well, well it's cool that uh, there's like so much diversity in mm-hmm. the mountains nowadays. Like even with y'all, because I see that you consider yourself like a hybrid country band, yeah. but I don't know, man. Like it's hard to put y'all in a category. It, yeah. it stands out. Well, I think that comes from the way I sing has always been a traditional country singer. I write mm-hmm. lyrics in, in very uh, poetic form as far as a country song. Yeah. Well, Kevin Cool, he's Van Halen. Like all the way, he's a shredder. That's his influences. Yeah. That's what he likes to play. And uh, Sean's a little more of a, I don't know, I would call him a Rocky Billy drummer, but I think he thinks he's more jazz, which I guess it all blends if you go far enough. Yeah. And uh, But I think you see that in the music. And at first, when we first got together, I think we tried to clamp that down, and I think that was the problem with that first album. Mm-hmm. We tried to say, no, 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 this is the box we need to be in. This is how we need to play. And the second album is we're, we're working on now, It's t- each one of us ourselves on it, and I like it a lot better. I think nice. I think I made a mistake with the first one. <laughs> I, but it, it was still good, though, man. Dirt, yeah. uh, Dirt Road Dandelion. That's yeah. one of my favorite songs yeah. to come out of this area. I'll catch myself yeah. singing it all the time. And like you were saying, like, yeah, the, the, it's really poetic. Like, just the whole mm-hmm. analogy of Dirt Road Dandelion. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a beautiful uh, thought to kind of just yeah. scramble around in your mind. Yeah. yeah, the whole thought of that song was there was, there was two thoughts that kind of merged. Is One is you've got such beauty around here mm-hmm. for such a... I don't know what you'd say. It's, I don't want to say a stripped area, but see, I grew up in coal mining families. Yeah. My grandfather was a coal mine. My father was a miner. I was in the Army when I left it. I was mining for a couple of years before I moved on to something else. But you, you, we'd grow up in these places, these old strip mines, and everything was just stripped and grass back before they really reclaimed everything. Yeah. And grass was sparse and all these things. And, and you know, there was beauty there in the people. And I thought, how would I you know, analogize that? How would I get that out there? So it came from that. Yeah. Plus, I saw, especially in my love stories, the things I did growing up, is you had this balance of you grow up with these girls, and then they would go to college, and you'd go coal mining, and then yeah. there was that split. And I thought, how do I illustrate that? So that's kind of how that song came. So it's it was, it's beautiful, man. In, in the music video, it's it feels like a movie, yeah. Almost like yeah. Who Jer- who done all that? Jared Hamilton. He done a great job. He's from this area originally, but he lives in Lexington now, and mm-hmm. he's played with a couple bands. And uh, he's a great musician, good dude. And he come in and did the um, one we did with Laidback, uh, oh, uh, Learn to Fly. Yeah, Learn to Fly, yeah. And he done that live, and uh, he's just a good dude. He'll probably do another one soon. I was watching that music video the other day, getting ready for all this. And I, it, it, what was it like playing beside a Dollar General? <laughs> That's pretty cool, man. Like, I've been on some pretty weird yeah. stages in, in, in my time, too, but never played outside of a Dollar General. <laughs> well, at the time, that was the biggest pl- show we'd ever played. We it, were there's a lot of people We were opening there, for Blackhawk is who was playing, and us and Laidback was opening for Blackhawk. Yeah. So I messaged Laidback and said, hey, bub, you care to get on stage and just shred some guitars with Cool? 
he's a fan of cool just like we are of his. Yeah. He said, absolutely. And then I seen that when we got there. I said, get a picture of that Dollar General. I said, get that in there. Because <laughs> it's not just a Dollar General. It's a Dollar General that's very proud of itself. Yeah. So with that big old sign. So uh, it, it was cool, man. And you know, that's kind of a staple of the yeah. mountains in the south nowadays. Everybody yeah. makes the joke like where there's a little piece of land, there's going to be a Dollar General there. Yeah. It, it adds a lot to it, man. Yeah. It, it was cool to see Kevin and laid back on stage, too. And, and yeah. kind of Kevin paying homage to yeah. laid back. That's just. That the uh, guy that videoed it, he got some really good moments in yeah. that video. Yeah, Jared, he did really well, man. We did around. We tried to get the feel of the whole place. Yeah, and uh, uh, them two, I man, they're they're my two favorite guitar players out of this area, and I, I don't say that lightly because there's a lot of good musicians out of this play, out of this area. Yeah. But Kevin, I mean, legitimately, not just because he's in my band, has always been my favorite guitar player from here, and laid back just puts it out, man. That's that's the beauty of someone like that. Is he'll yeah. have something two weeks from now. I can't wait to hear it. You know, he's he's a beast, man. He's on yeah. a totally different level. But David, he deserves everything that he's got. He's oh, absolutely, a great guy, really good guy. Yeah, I watched that little thing he did, um, that little video, and it showed him like back in the '80s when he's with them heavy metal bands, with yeah. the big long hair, and and to think that that he how he's adjusted his music taste over the years, and really just the persistence with keeping oh, yeah. with it. Who does that? You know, we were talking off air, a few people we knew that were like, well, what have they put out? You know, we we ain't heard from them lately and stuff. And because that's just the the flow of things. We haven't put out anything because of Corona. It's just a flow. And Layback doesn't. He just. But it's on and on and on. He did an album release right in the middle of it at a uh, drive-in theater. Yeah. And that was a great. Well, I didn't get a chance to go to the show, but I seen video and it looked awesome. It was great. It's super clever, too. Like, that's that was just a good thought. Yes, yeah. that's, that's people that are serious, I guess. And for like somebody like him, he has he has the vibe to be able to put a to put on a great drive-in show. Yeah, like so, some bands and some acts, you can eh, not really like Lady Gaga couldn't do something like yeah, that. Yeah. But him, just the vibe, man. Like it's cool that he was still able to do that. Absolutely. And Kingsport's a great album. It really is. I really really like that album. Who would have thought though? Like taking a picture inside Pals. Yeah. You know that's and man for the there's so many people around. Do you have you ever ate Pals? Yeah. Well, we hit it on the way. We go to South Carolina, North Carolina a lot. Yeah. And there's one out out that way, so we eat there. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's in like, uh, do you hit the one in Virginia, like Wise yeah, or Norton? I, don't I, I know, forget I where it's at over there. Yeah, I forget what that little town's called. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that, that's the same one I go to. But there's a lot of people around this area that don't know anything about Pals. Yeah. That, man, some of the best fast food I've yeah. ever had in my entire life. We didn't know either. We just, it was wrapped around the door, and I was like, well, we go there four or five times a year, about twice seen it. I said, listen, these people ain't here for nothing. There's got to yeah. be something to this. Let's go. Let's stand in line. Let's go. Or sit, you know, sit in line. It was good, man. They uh, for, for people get the chili burger. I ha- yeah. I've never had it, but that's like the big staple yeah. there. And such a wild looking place too. <laughs> big old foot long hot dog outside yeah. of it. The whole building looks like a cheeseburger. Yeah, really neat establishment. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and like now the but the people that were in this pals are now like. There's a few people standing in front of them in line, yeah. and you can see like some people at the cash register, and them people had no idea they were about to be on the album yeah. cover for Laid Back. So cool, man. Well, see, I didn't realize that. I take pictures of stuff all the time for yeah. album covers because you think, well, i got to get something perfect. It's got to relate to the music or, or what we're trying to say or do and all this. But then you just take a regular picture, a mundane picture of every day, and then just put captions on it. You know, put your title, put your songs on it. Yeah. And it just... It takes you back to a lot of this stuff, like a lot of these, like these regular yeah. pictures, you know. Well, like the David Bowie one we were talking about with uh, Ziggy Stardust. Who knows, mm. like, how much thought he put into that? That's just yeah. a picture taken outside of a, I don't know where that's at, maybe New York or something, just like an apartment in New York City, but yeah. still an iconic photograph. Everybody knows the Ziggy Stardust album cover. Yeah. I mean, Tina. Yeah. Tina didn't put a lot in that. <laughs> she no. sold herself. Yeah, she only put like half a, half clothing on for it too yeah, yeah not a lot at all she didn't put into it and even eric clampton's slow hand you know just yeah. but, it's sim- like well simplistic is sometimes better yeah. a lot of people will yeah. overthink stuff man and you just gotta go with it yeah i think that's a little bit nostalgia plus a little bit of just common sense yeah. the two i always think of i always think of glass houses Mm-hmm. And then I always think of Morrison Hotel, Jim Morrison, oh, yeah. the doors where they're just sitting at a diner taking a picture, yeah. kind of like laid back. But 
Uh, it's uh, album covers mean so much, and it kind of breaks my heart that ha- like how popular streaming is getting and stuff yeah. like that. Because man, I will, even with CDs, yeah, I'd love to crack it open and get the little booklet and mm-hmm. flip through it, and that's a lot. That's an experience that not a lot of kids growing up are going to have. Yeah. And, I, I, the art that comes with the music yeah. means a lot. I mean, heck, Pink Floyd's The Wall. You know, that's a great example right there. I used to get so disappointed when you'd pull them out of a CD because I guess we're about the CD era. Yeah. And the booklet would have nothing in it except the copyright information, a little yeah. bitty. Yeah. And, you know, that was very prominent when we were growing up. I remember buying, uh, you remember, um, I was that company, you could send like $5 to an 10 you 200 CDs <laughs> yeah. how, or something. How did they do that? Like, I, I don't I know. I remember that. I don't, was that legal? I, I think don't know. I it's going to no come idea. out that that was China and we owe them a trillion dollars now. <laughs> like, somehow that's, it's going to bite us. It has to. I got so much good music. I get that catalog and I'm like, I've never heard of this, never heard of this. And I remember buying the Ray of Light Madonna album, whom yeah. I've never really been a fan of, but a friend of mine was like, you can see her boob in it. Like he's like, get it, get the cover, and I bought the entire CD simply for that. Like that's just childhood memories. Yeah. You know what I mean? To think of Madonna, man. That was you ever see the Nike thing that she done? No. Uh, yeah, I can't. We can't. Get, Rough, if you're 18 huh? years and older, look look up the <laughs> M- Madonna Nike thing. Yeah, yeah, but she done a good job shaving. Let's just yeah. say that. Okay, Madonna, buddy, that was that's a wild woman right yeah. there. It's thought- like still to this day going hard with the weirdness. Yeah. She, did you see the Aretha Franklin tribute that she was yeah. at? But how I don't know what she was going for. She looked like a shaman, like man, just out there. But incredible music. Yeah, you wonder at what point is that really who that person is? There's gonna be three directions in my opinion. Is that who she always was? Is that who she's been designed to be? Marketing like, you know, she was scantily dressed because she wanted to sell that album to an 11 year old John. Like exactly. that's, that was yeah. the idea, or. Have you designed that so long that that's who you've become? You know, mm. maybe she wasn't like that to begin with, but is that just who she is now from years and years of it? Mm. You know, I watch. Do you remember the old drunken James Brown interview? You ever watched that? Is that the one where uh, he they're, they're talking about all the allegations and he's yeah. going to tour in Brazil and so yeah, <laughs> he's uh, I feel good. But that's what he was like. He's such a character at that point. They're like, what about these serious allegations of you abusing women? He's like, <laughs> living he's like, in America. He's like, born in America. He's like, hey, he's just going on and on. And Ain't nothing wrong. <laughs> and they're like, are you drunk? And but I think he's not. I think it's just was his character at that point. That's yeah. just who you are. If you get a chance, man, uh, Eddie. Jenkins, he was yeah. on the podcast just a few weeks ago. He turned me on to this, and I've been showing a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike Judge, the guy that created King oh, of the Hill and Beavis and Tales Butthead, from and yes, oh, and, and, and they do a uh, Rick James episode. Yeah. So you get to learn a lot of like kind of yeah. why he became that way. Him and old Bootsy, Bootsy's and <laughs> if he's done, Collins, if he's done twenty five episodes, Bootsy's in nineteen of them. Yeah, yeah, they have a whole like thing about Bootsy yeah. too. They do. Uh, they start up with the Outlaw Country, and they do like uh, mm-hmm. George. Jones, Johnny Paycheck, yeah. uh, Waylon, everybody oh, yeah. basically, and then it goes into funk, and it has uh, George Clinton, uh, Rick James, mm-hmm. uh, sh- Bootsy. They have a lot of people. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's really neat though, man. And oh, uh, Rick it. James, I, I knew it was like uh, crazy for all of it, yeah for for him, and especially his band because of how controlling he was. Yeah. But I didn't know to what extent. Like it got yeah. crazy. Man, you know, I read a book one time, which I love the Mike Judge series. I hope he makes them for 100 years. Yeah. See, stuff like that you have unlimited material for. i tell you something else that reminds me of the Mike Judge a lot is the um, uh, Cocaine Rhinestones podcast. Have you ever mm, listened I, to it? I've oh, never my heard of God, that. You're going to love it. I, I envy that you just now found that out. It's by David Allen Cole's son. Oh, and, God. Uh, oh, he's great. He's just great. And he somehow he got access to all the archives of the uh, Grand Ole Opry, so he has access to stuff that just oh. I'd never heard. But it, it reminds you of that a whole lot. And uh, he's about to put two, season two out in February. But he does the murder ballad of Spade Cooley, and I did not know who Spade Cooley was. I don't. He was I'm not familiar either. Biggest selling artist for almost ten years. He was a king of swing. Uh, he hmm. had a TV show that at one point in time had 75 million people a night watching. Jesus. Which is, in today's spread out world, you'll never have anything. The Super Bowl won't have that many. You'll just never have anything like that again. Yeah. And uh, he ended up murdering his wife. Well, oh. not to run it for you, but uh, <laughs> then Ronald Reagan becomes governor of California. He's so popular. Ronald Reagan uh, pardons him and lets him out for just this brutal murder. Well, oh, my God. The night they pardon him, the guy has a heart attack and dies. And uh, it's just 
Dang, you got that's just, wild, man. I, I just hope to say enough to make people interested. And he's got one about Winona Judd, or the Judds in general, and so it's talking a lot about Ashland, Kentucky, and stuff like that. Yeah. And man, you've got to check that out. That's cool. I've uh, never heard of that, man. So I didn't know awesome. David Allen Coe had a son. Yeah. It's, it's kind of scary. Um, what is his name? Um, Mayhem, Mayhem Cole? Mayhem's his middle name? I don't know, but he's really good at that. I think that might be the only thing he's good at. Like <laughs> he keeps getting Twitter fights with famous people and stuff he says is kind of nonsensical. I'll tell you another funny story like that. Uh, I was talking about this kind of when you were talking about the Rick James thing. Is I read a story one time, and in Canada, they when they were in the music scene, they were all sharing an apartment together, and it was Rick James, Neil Young, and the lead singer of Steppenwolf, which is pretty much rock, Americana if you want to label it whatever, and yeah. then and funk, yeah, yeah. funk, jazz. Pop, well, the meaning is 80s pop, probably. And, uh, Whoa, that's a bad combination, man. <laughs> it, it has to be rough, but I guess they were all just playing together. But that happened to Steppenwolf. A band toured half an entire tour as Steppenwolf, and he kept getting like no shows and legal allegations of singer. So he had to leave Canada and come down to like Georgia, I think, is where he met up with him at. He finds them, gets them all arrested. And then the Whoa. manager of the tour is like, man, I hate that you did that. He's like, we had. 25 shows lined up and so much money. And he's like, 25 shows, huh? And he's like, let me go call the guys. So the actual band, Stephen Wolf, finishes the tour out after the whole Whoa. first half was was an imitation band. That's crazy, yeah. man. Uh, you know, get that money. Yeah. <laughs> That's good for them. You see, you could get away with stuff like that back in the day. Nowadays, man. Yeah. Oh, no. well, it was- I, well, I like some shows, though. Like Some shows have started like taking phones away. Yeah. from people and that makes the experience a lot better in yeah. my mind so many people i'll go to concerts and different shows yeah. they're just watching it through a screen yeah which i catch myself doing that well it's something i've consciously tried to stop because i'm looking for inspiration if i'm there i'm looking for something like you know i went and watched uh gordon lightfoot mm-hmm. who's one of my all-time favorites and he plays everything uh capo off off the first fret and I went home and wrote ten songs like that. Like yeah. I just was like, "That's so cool," and uh, but that's something that I thought about. Cause see, I don't really have, I don't know, I, my principles and stuff are a lot different than a lot of the musicians that I'm friends with and stuff. And we went to Sturgill Simpson like a month before that in Ashland, and everybody was there. Every musician I know was there. Yeah, we all hung out. We got to talk. That's where I got to meet Tyler Childers for the first time. He was in the crowd. We all, you know, he hadn't hit big or nothing. We all just hanging out. And then a month later, I go to Gordon Lightfoot, and none of them are there. And I'm like, man, I love Sturgill, but this is a top five rider of all time. Like, how do you not, you know? It's it's, it's different. I know, well, some people, I've discovered a lot of people here within like the last year that I had no idea about that was uh, big for this area. There's so many. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's, yeah. It's easy to get kind of lost and everything. Like, some people will be up on the podcast, and I'll be like, yeah. have we done this before? Like, I mean, I, I have no idea because yeah. there's so many. But it's a, it's a good thing, though, too. And it shows oh, you yeah. the uh, majority of talent in this area. Well, the only thing I, w- I would fight back about that is the thing that I'm seeing happening, and it, it bothers me, and I, and I wish it wouldn't like this, is a lot of the talent that comes out of this area gets shaped by the other talent coming out of this area. You'll walk into a place and there'll be 10 of us and eight of us have the exact same thoughts and beliefs and our music starts sounding the same and everybody wanted to sound like Stapleton for so long and, mm-hmm. and now everybody wants to sound like Tyler. And, and you know, if someone, a friend of mine, sends me a song and, and I'm like, well, it's just a guitar and a violin, say. Well, what made you think to do that? You know, oh, well, this other album. Yeah, but that's not how you're supposed to be making your music. Yeah. You know, figure something. And it was like a Morgan Wallen thing. Man, I had so many really good musicians, people I really respect. And I, I mean, I don't, I don't think you love people for nothing, mm. but take that seed of hate he did. That's all it was. He was talking to his friend, seed of hate. It's hate, yeah. but it's a seed of hate. And then it allows you to open up this gate and these dump trucks to dump hate on top of it. Yeah. And it got to where by the end of the night they were posting how they hated this and. And some like I seen a post. It was like I hate the white girls that listen to this. I hate <laughs> the country music establishment that allows this to go. And I'm like, no, no, no. You hated those things beforehand, and yeah. somehow you you let him license your hate somehow. And that's how it grows, man. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it grows ex- exponentially too, and yeah. like it, it is it's hard to stop it. Yeah. And it, well, it's kind of like the old saying, like a smile is contagious. Yeah. So is hate. Yeah. Exactly.
and you get group think and I hate that so bad. I wish I wish because mm-hmm. these are these all started out as super individualistic people. They couldn't do the things they did, mm-hmm. you know. You yeah. know. I just didn't think that Morgan Wallen of all people yeah. would be the thing to divide the internet this week. Like I had no idea. Yeah. That's the thing though. I don't think it's I don't think you know, like I, you got your Elvis picture. I'm a huge Elvis fan. I mean, I've been listening to the whole Chronicles of Sun Records the last two weeks. I'm a huge fan. And they they ask a lot of times, can there ever be another Elvis? Well, I don't think you can have a person that can do that again, but I think it's a slot. I think Michael Jackson hit that slot. I think Garth Brooks came really close to hitting that slot. At you know, Had Lady Gaga produced more music, I think she might have been able to do it when she was really running in the early yeah. 2000s. And so I think it becomes a slot that you fall into now as opposed – Morgan Wall was just a dude. He just happened yeah. to fall in that slot. People were waiting for someone to do that. Yeah. And that's what worries me. I think society, I see too much group think with us all. Well, so. I, I think it's, well, what helps me with that, because whenever I, whenever I do stand-up, sometimes I'll catch myself mm-hmm. acting like another comedian or maybe yeah. saying a joke like another comedian, and I'll... I, I think that's because like I'll be watching that person. Or I just watch that person special yeah. or whatever. Whenever I stop watching uh-huh. a, a lot of stand up, that's when I'll start to find my own voice and start writing jokes yeah. my same way. It would be hard for a band to do, but to me, that would be one of the ways to uh, not sound like everybody else is stop listening to everybody else. Yeah. But it's I mean, but you love music though, so what yeah. can you do? Well, that actually Lennon talked about that a lot. How he just. He couldn't listen to popular music anymore because it, it would shape the way he made music. Um, Eddie Van Halen, he which I don't believe him, I think he's lying, but he said famously he had not heard a song released before or after like 1980, 1985 or something. Uh, yeah. I don't believe that either, nah. but uh, but I understand the mindset behind it to keep it all out of you. And it's funny you'd say comedy because I did stand up for a long time. Really? And, uh, that's for how real? I got started. And once I moved here, because I moved here because I had a daughter. And uh, music kind of was the evolution of that I just moved into into music. But yeah, stand up is cadences. Like you know, there's a reason Chris Rock jo- jokes sound like Chris Rock because it's his cadence. Exactly. That's why he's so easily imitated by people because it's a profound cadence. And that's what happens. Like if I listen to too many Chris Rock things, I start telling Chris Rock jokes, and I say, No, 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 that's not how he wrote that joke. That's not how it works. Yeah. And uh, on the spot on stage, it's hard to stay in character. Yeah, it's you'll it's, be able to white people. And it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you start, yeah, but that's what it is. It's a character, you know. Yeah, and uh, I got a good buddy now that's on the circuit, and I love keeping up with him, Nick Cheney out of Lexington. Man, I haven't got a chance to do a show with him. Well, actually, maybe one, but not a lot. He seems like such a cool dude, though. Really funny. I've yeah. seen some of his clips. Oh, he's awesome. I grew up with him, and uh, when when I was doing it, that's kind of what inspired him to do it. He's like, I'm going to do it someday, and I was like, someday. It's like with anything. Yeah. You know, it's like the old CCR song, Someday Will Never Come. You're never going to do it unless you, if you're not doing it tomorrow, you ain't never going to do it. Yeah. And he was, you know, 100 people's coming to me about music or, hey, man, check this song out. I think I'm going to start playing. Come on, let's go play. You can open for us. I don't care. Yeah. And then they never do. And he was the one that did, man. He, uh, wow. You know, he came up and he started doing it. And then you had Chuck, Austin Chuck, who has a podcast out of Lexington and he's doing a lot of good things. He was the one that put out the Christmas album, the Appalachian Christmas album we all played okay, on. Okay, I thought that that name sounded familiar. That's and, where I, uh, I, yeah, I listened to it. See, he was the he was after Nick. He grew up with us, but younger. He saw I did it, then Nick did it, then he did it, and you know, you inspire people that way. That's cool, you know? man. What so, made you get into stand up? I had no idea oh, that dudes, you had that background. That was my natural. I was the yeah, you know, class clown, most humorous. Yeah, that was just. I was always that storyteller. I would always, you know, we'd drink a lot and party in college. So I was like, come here, let me tell you the story about one. Yeah. Me and my buddy Kevin, we did whatever, you know. What What was your first gig? Uh, Coming off Broadway. Oh, nice. Mine, yeah. mine too, actually. I emailed and I was like, uh, can I can I just come and do five minutes sometime? And they're like, yeah, man, you can do five minutes. Well, the time they let me come was, um, I can't remember what the setup was. But the house was absolutely packed. Yeah. And I was like, I didn't realize that's what this was. I thought this was I could come and tell to five people yeah. and see if it was any good. And uh, but the first time I went on stage, it was like being blacked out, man. I, I went and told the jokes. Got a, I did really well the first time really? as far as first times go. Yeah, And then I was just sitting, sitting back in my seat in the 
over there on the side again. I was just like, what happened? That's one of the weird things about stand-up is that a lot of people don't get. If you're like not at a big show, yeah. even at like a small club like Comedy Off-Broadway, yeah. once you get done, yeah, you go right back out into the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, yeah. it's almost not safe sometimes, yeah. but uh, I love it, man. See, I, I well, I started out at uh, Jenny Wiley there at the uh, Dewey's Bar and Grill, but my first yeah. like real gig was yeah. comedy off Broadway and uh man once you get that first laugh you know yeah. it's ah, such a good such a good feeling man. yeah I've uh we're, we're kind of looking at some dates right now we're going to try to get back into it is it something that you've ever thought about maybe trying out again well I don't want to divide it that that's always a problem even when I would play music we play Lexington and stuff your friends and stuff and people there would be like I remember when you used to stand up you need to be going doing stand up that was you're better at stand up than you are at singing which is probably <laughs> true but if you divide that creativeness like if I get in joke mind I'm not thinking you know love ballad mind yeah. anymore you know for, or and vice versa so I, I still write saying. jokes all the time like I, you can't help that I think you don't turn that off no, it, it, it's hard, man. Whenever you get that mindset, yeah, I'll catch myself three times a day yeah. just writing a little one-liner or something yeah. that I think is funny. But coming off Broadway, it was funny. The first show went super well. It was like, I mean, it was like 150 people was packed, and it went real well. The people in front of me did real well. The people behind me did real well. There was like five of us in total. Mm-hmm. And uh, then the second time, it was, uh, I wrote a bunch of breast cancer jokes. Uh, the pilgrims oh, and it just but it was all funny and it wasn't as bad as it sounds well i show up and the first time it's all young college kids drinking it was great and everything i show up and it's a bunch of i look out in the crowd and i'm like what the? it's a bunch of 45 50 year old women like Ooh. i don't know where that crowd came from and they're just everywhere yeah and i start telling these jokes and no one gives you like no one cares <laughs> these jokes are not doing well and no one's laughing and i'm like oh my god it was so easy the first time and it is so hard now <laughs> Buddy, that that crowd right there. Every like, if you go into like a redneck, well, listen, we're rednecks, we're hillbillies Absolutely. people. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, we can say that term. Yeah. But uh, if you go into like like a redneck town, you yeah. know, if you get forties and fifties, most of the time they're they're yeah. awesome. They, they yeah. really are. But yeah, in Lexington, that crowd might be a little bit different. Yeah, which all I remember is you remember the movie Seinfeld made or made comedian. Where he got back into comedy all those years later. I haven't seen it, but I've, yeah, I've been told about it. Though. But he bombs really, really bad in several shows, mm-hmm. and uh, like the crowd's yelling at him. And they're like, "Is this your first time?" He's like, "Where's Kramer?" and stuff like that. And he's just like, <laughs> and he comes off stage and he's like, "It doesn't matter what they do. You have to do the material. I'm trying to work it out. I'm trying to create it. It sucks. I had to yeah. drive into the storm. I have to do it." And uh, that was all that was going through my head, so I just kept going. Whereas. Yeah. He, he, he his his one rule is rely solely on the material. Yeah, yeah. Don't 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 get off the beaten path. Yeah, rely on the material, and and that's a good piece of advice for a yeah. comedian to have. Yeah. Somebody outside of stand up might not understand that, yeah. but a comedian, you know exactly yeah. what that means. Yeah, and uh, you take somebody like Kevin Hart who has a different <clears throat> philosophy. He's got jokes for everybody. That cat, if something goes bad. He jumps into yeah. another joke, you know. Have and, you ever uh, seen uh what's his name, man? Andrew Scholes. I don't know that I have. If you get a chance to look him up, yeah, his crowd work is phenomenal. Yeah. You see, but I, I'm I'm like you though. I'm like I'm a I, I I try to rely on the material. Yeah. The crowd work I'm kind I'm pretty good at, but I'm yeah. not like no Kevin Hart or Andrew yeah. Scholes or anything like that. Yeah. Which I never had to do that. I never got heckled really, and I never I never had to get off the material. It either worked or it didn't. It mostly did, but I don't know. But yeah. I always envied people that could do that. We had um, we went watch David Tell. Me and Nick did one time. We got oh, to meet wow, him and hang man. out Where'd with him. Where'd you see him. a tell at? That's comedy off Broadway, ironically. Dang, man, they, not, they get some good comedians in there yeah, nowadays. Yeah. But dude, I I go in there and I look at the wall yeah. and I see Pryor and Stanhope Kenison. and Kennison, and I'm like, well, I know some of them dudes are dead, but yeah. it just. Yeah, I I would love to see David Tell there. It's funny you would say Stanhope because when I got off the stage from that one, and I was the last one that night, so I sent a terrible taste in everybody's mouth leaving. <laughs> yeah. The janitor, I walked out, I was like, I need a beer. And the janitor was like, I watched Doug Stanhope do the same thing here. He's like, don't you worry about it. He's like, them people yeah, just wasn't man. ready. I'm like, I know that's not true, but thank you for saying that. <laughs> uh, he, he, he might be right, man, because yeah. I can't imagine somebody like Stanhope coming yeah. into Lexington. Yeah, That dude, for the people that don't know, 
Listen, I I, I, try, I I talk on some pretty risque yeah. subjects, but Stanhope yeah. don't give a damn. No. That dude goes for it. Yeah. I, I get nervous watching his specials sometimes. <laughs> he's got that red face, and you're like, oh, he's bombing. <laughs> and, and he's like, he's, he's dressed all weird, looks yeah. like a clown, but yeah. apparently that's the way he does it. And always loaded. Yeah. Every single show, he's probably had who knows yeah. how many drinks and everything else. But, man, well, I was watching uh, him and Attell on this, uh, yeah. it was like this couch show that they used to have on HBO. And it was just all all comedians, and him and Attell were kind of ripping back and forth. And yeah. even Attell said like Stanhope was his favorite comedian. I think I've seen the show you're talking about. Yeah. It's, it's good. I, f- I forget what yeah. it's called, but people can look that up. Yeah, Stanhope and Attell were just kind of riffing off each yeah. other and making fun of everybody else. Yeah. Attell is a comedy genius. Oh, he was my favorite at one point. I mean, you, comedy you just move like it was bands like I still think the Beatles was the greatest band. I mean, Zeppelin's probably who I listen to and. You know, and you get in CCR moments. I mean, you get into everything. Yeah. But with comedy, you kind of get there. You hear their jokes. You experience their life view with them. And then you just calmly move on and you go to someone else. It's always changing, which is a good thing. Yeah. It's, a, it's a, you know, I'll be listening to, you know, the Beatles or Zeppelin when I die. You know, who knows the comedian I'll be listening to at that point. He's probably not even born yet, you know. Yeah, exactly. Who knows. And, and Well, that's another beautiful thing about uh, stand-up is – it's an art form that will never go out. No. You know, I mean, sometimes rock will be bigger than yeah. rap. Sometimes rap will be bigger than country. The whole yeah. mainstream uh, music scene, well, is always changing. Yeah. But with comedy, you know, it's uh, you you have the greats, but the the art form itself stays the same. Absolutely. It's one person up there with a mic. Yeah. It's a. Uh, it, it, it's an art form like nothing else. Yeah. You don't have anybody up there supporting you. Oh, You're yeah. not relying on anybody else. Yeah. It is you and a microphone. And it's a yeah. uh, it's an art form of the people, though, yeah. because you're saying stuff that either people agree with or don't agree with. Yeah. You're almost like a funny motivational speaker up there yeah. almost. Or you can be motivational it's or un... Yeah, social yeah. commentary. That's a great way to yeah. describe That's it. That's how I always thought of it. And it's beautiful, though. Yeah. It, it really is. And... The whole process of writing a joke too, just like mm-hmm. like I'll kind of like look at it as layers, yeah. and it's it's a really fun process, yeah. man. I love it. That's what I always got when people introduce me. Hey, this is John. He's the comedian. Was, right, tell me a joke. It's not really how it works. I hated that, man. I, I still like, do. <laughs> still do. I was like, come to the show. I'll tell you lots of jokes. It's one know? of the worst things you can say to a comedian. Yeah. Is tell me a joke. Yeah, but I understand the notion. But I don't yeah. know. A lot of people ask me. They'll say, "What's harder?" Singing in front of with a band or or doing stand up alone, and I always thought it was stand up. Yeah, and a lot of people were like, "No, no, I couldn't be singing." And I'm like, "Well, once the band starts rocking, once Kevin starts in on that guitar, you almost feel like you're surrounded by it. You're safe mm-hmm. a little bit." And nobody's really offended by a song. I mean, if you made yeah. a really wild song, maybe. But yeah. most songs, 90% yeah. of them, are not offensive. What I would say probably is <laughs> 70. 80% of stand-up is offensive. I mean, yeah. like, somebody's going to be offended by something. Yeah. It's yeah. just to what level are they offended. Yeah. yeah. And, well, the way I always thought about it is if, if you hear a bad song or a singer sucks, like, you, like the crowd will make a face. They're like, that's stupid. <laughs> Why are you playing a, you know, rock guitar and just dying? Or what are you doing here? It's like, yeah. when they booked me, I didn't know who this place was. And that's <laughs> happened a lot, man. That happened to the show with, uh, oh, I tell you a funny show. Um, it was with Haley actually because uh, they called and we were doing like two hours and I just don't like playing more than two hours that's a long time dude. well there's nobody I want to listen to more than two hours I mean after yeah. two hours I'd be like Bob Dylan um, I'm, I'm going to see you Bubby I'm glad you came you know, <laughs> yeah. good listening to you you know there's nobody I want to listen to that the voice gets dull uh, the sounds the songs because they're written from the same perspective just start blending so yeah. we're doing two hours. And they're like, well, what we you to do? They call back. So we want you to do three hours. We'd already signed a contract. Or so I, I always really liked Haley. I like the way she sings and stuff. And and I and I messaged her. I said, come, come play with us. She said, okay. So we did that. Well, we showed up. It was a New Year's Eve party. Like oh, liquor yeah. bar, everything. Yeah, I remember that. We show up, man. And everybody in there is 75 years old or older. Oh, God. And like I walk in the door and the guy's like, you know any Elvis? I was like, I love Elvis, but I don't. I always, we don't sing. I've never sang a cover song. I just, yeah. we don't. That's not what I got into it for. It's good. You know, I'm not, you need to play to your crowds, and I understand that, but this is what I, you know, I love to write songs and stories. That's what I do. 
So I was like, no, nah, man. Was like, he's like, well, go learn some. I'm like, God, we're playing 15 minutes, man. Like, I can't go learn that <laughs> oh one song. Oh, my God. And they were just yelling, and people kept stopping me. And it was really confrontational with these old people. And finally, the lady, and they paid us a, a great amount of money to be there, and we'd sign contracts. I said, honey, what is this? Why? Why is this? And she's like, oh, yeah, the last three years we have an Elvis impersonator. That's who all these people are here to see. <sighs> like, Why didn't you tell me? I was like, you watched our music videos. You watched our songs. She'll start tire out. You knew what we were. Why did you bring us here? Man, there's some wild shows out there. A lot yeah. of people don't get that. It's a... Uh... Yeah, I, I did. You so you, you didn't learn any Elvis after that? Though. No. Well, <laughs> see, we had booked a two show situation there, and so going into the second show, we were going to put some stuff together, which I love Elvis. I I, I have no problem singing Elvis songs if we have to for that kind of money. And she messaged, and she's like, "I think we're going another direction." I was like, "But then she tried to act like it was my fault." She's no. like, "The crowd didn't like you guys." I was like, first of all, you knew your crowd. You've done this for ten years, and you knew us." And you made a bad decision. Yeah. Like, I always try to be polite about it, but. Uh, well, there's some venues that you see close their doors, and yeah. you definitely get why. Yeah. I've been in a few of those places where they just don't know what they're doing. Well, I think that's a hard thing. I think managing the art or the performance in a place is a big deal to a place's success. You know, any bar that serves alcohol will have clientele because yeah. people just like to drink, you know? Mm. Now, there's a few things to make it successful. You need to make a safe environment. You need to make a fun environment, have things to do, have a dance for things. But the biggest thing, in my opinion, and I may be biased, is entertain people. I can drink on my couch. Mm -hmm. You know, I can drink at my buddy's house. I can drink the lake, you know, whatever. Yeah. Why am I coming there? Treat your artist right. Pay them right. Set them up to success, for success. Have a good sound system in there. We've played places that... You can hear you, the sound system was terrible, and you're like, we would have yeah. brought our own had you told us this. You told us you had a PA system that could handle all this. Yeah. You know? Well, promoters and venue owners need to know the art. Yeah. I mean, like a lot of them just have the business mindset, yeah. and I get that you're a business owner, so you have to have it, but you also have to know what you're doing whenever it comes to the entertainment and the art that you're presenting to yeah. people. Yeah. And that's something that that woman obviously didn't know. I hate that's that too. Crazy. That was a bad experience. And you take a place like Smoke and Butts in Paintsville. I like yeah. to talk them up because David Castle and Megan, they own it. They're awesome people. Yeah, I've they, heard nothing but good things. Dude, they understand the artist. They come out and hang out with you. When you go, they'll know every lyric you ever wrote. They'll know your stuff. They put, I mean, because Tyler grew up with them. They got a big thing about Tyler. But we play there all the time. They put a big thing on the wall about us. Oh, that's cool, man. Oh, it's awesome, man. And, like, he, he messages me all the time, you know. We always pull a good crowd there, and our band plays well there. And there's just people that aren't. It's not disrespectful to them you know it's you know you take someone like mirrored image whom i like a great deal that place is not built for their music and in the same way that you could put them at a, at a pop show and they would kill and coming in behind them i don't know us maybe not do well you know because we don't play that kind of music so you've got to understand that the difference in that you know yeah and they do really well if anybody out there is wanting to play music hit david castle up Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah, I've heard nothing but good things. I haven't got a chance to go down there, but oh, it's awesome. I, I, I see pictures of their uh, food on their Facebook page, and it looks it delicious, is. man. It's good, man. Everything's mm. good there. The people's mm. good. It's yeah. See, see, that's one problem that I run into a lot with comedy is like the whole booking venues thing. Yeah. Because at one time I had this like other guy that was helping me out with it. Now I've learned to do it on my own. Oh, because, yeah. Because, yeah, some people just don't know where to book you. There was this like one place that was called – I'm just going to go ahead and say it's, it was called a Wonderlust in West Virginia. They'll probably never hear this. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, I thought, like, oh, Wonderlust. That may yeah. be like, I didn't know, maybe like just like a cool headshot place or I don't yeah. know. It just sounded like a little trippy kind of yeah. college town place environment. I don't know. Yeah. And it turned out to be like some coffee shop that a lot of yeah. old people hung out of. Like it was the same, it was the same way as you, like 40s and up. <laughs> yeah. And man, like we had this. The tour was called the Dirty South Tour. Yeah. And I specifically made this tour like with just the raunchiest jokes that I could tell. Yeah. That were like still funny, but just really out yeah, there. Yeah, theme tour, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It was that that was the whole purpose of it. And we had Donnie Baker on and everything. Yeah. Like it was it, it went great. We done some shows here in Pikeville. But the last show was at this Wonderlust place. And the the very first joke was uh, oh, Wonderlust. 
this place sounds like a bad porno. <laughs> and crickets, just nothing. I'm like, oh, this is going to go terrible. <laughs> and yeah, man, it it went really bad. But see, like, I, I don't play music, so I don't know like what that experience is with bombing at a venue. But whenever you're doing it with stand-up, I try to have fun with it. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. I just like, yeah, because like, uh, uh, Bill Hicks, he, yeah. he had a great analogy about that. Yeah. We had this one joke where... He's like taking a dump on the stage, and like people like would find this joke so disgusting uh, that they would actually be getting up and leaving. Uh, and he would just look around doing the joke, like full like squatting down and everything. Uh, He's like, "Yeah, this joke usually clears the room," <laughs> and just had fun with it. And that's uh, what you gotta. That's what you gotta be. You, you what, what, no matter what art form you're in, you gotta learn that you're not going to please everybody. Yeah, and and, and don't please yourself first yeah, and foremost. Yeah. If you don't like what it is that you're doing, just trying to yeah. make somebody else happy, it's not going to be good. No, you're right. I always try to call them out. Like, if you engage with people, like, uh, tell a joke didn't work, and I do this, my wife would tell you right now, I do it in daily life. If I say something that doesn't go well, I say, that joke's funnier than you're letting on. Yeah. I was like, or you'll get that one later, honey, trust me. <laughs> and if you, I found if you, you get people specifically, they'll, oh, wait, he's talking to me, and then they'll start paying attention. And uh, yeah. But it's so much worse as a musician. Because, you know, if I'm writing a story song or something that's, say, five minutes longer, we're jamming it longer live, and I get to the first stanza of the story, the whole setup, and no one gave a shit. Like, <laughs> you're like, oh, my God, I'm going to tell this whole story to nobody. Nobody cares now. You know, it's not, you can't shift gears. You can't be like, never mind, let's go to something else. Yeah, at first, like, uh, stuff like that really bothered me, man. But now it's just, it's funny. Yeah. Hey, you yeah. got to have fun with it. Yeah. Yeah, my, my wife is the same way whenever it comes to my stand-up. Right. And I got a joke about it. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, my wife doesn't support my stand-up, but she'll tell me when a joke is good or not. Yeah. Like, sometimes I'll run a joke by her, and she's like, that's horrible. That's offensive. You shouldn't be saying stuff like uh, like that. That's when I say, okay, there's something there. That's yeah, a good joke. Yeah, that's a good joke. Yeah. yeah. So It's got to make you uncomfortable. That's though Carlin Pryor. I guess I'll with Lenny Bruce. That was their style of comedy. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so that's kind of set the format for everybody. Lenny, man, everybody that wants to, that that is into stand-up comedy or wants to be a comedian needs to know the name Lenny Bruce. Oh, yeah. That guy, man. The early years. Went through so much crap to be able, well, to give us the platform to say what it is yeah. that we want to say. You wouldn't have the comedy that you have nowadays if it wasn't for Lenny Bruce. That yeah. dude was being arrested for the stuff he was saying on stage. Yeah. He would yeah. cuss and then be put in handcuffs as soon as he stepped off the stage just for yeah. cussing. Yeah. yeah, and ended up killing his career too because he 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 swerved into it. You know, they thought it was you know turn out of the curve. They, he turned yeah. into it and just started trying to antagonize people, yeah. and it ended up ruining his career. Like he, but but he, you know, I mean, he went for it though, oh, and. Yeah. and I hope I don't know what happens after you die, but if he like if he can look down or yeah. just know what his I hope that he knows what is yeah. his impact on yeah. the whole art form of stand up. Man, he was crazy. Like he would take on the media and everything. Oh, One yeah. of my favorite bits that he done, and like he was talking about fake news back in the fifties. Yeah. One time he got two separate newspapers, yeah. and I think it was a story about some bank robbery. Uh -huh. or something like that and one story uh, they said that the people got I don't know the exact details but I'll just I'll just say like somebody got away with like 17,000 yeah. and this uh, newspaper said that they got away with 14,000 yeah. and he would just like talk about how yeah, yeah. the media is fake and uh Man, he, he was taking on big establishments and police yeah. departments and all that back in the 50s. Oh yeah, yeah. That dude he, was he, awesome, he, man. he meant he meant a lot well, when it comes to stand up. He was Jewish too, wasn't he? You think he looks like it. I'm pretty sure he was. I can, I can see that. Which you could probably trace his roots to the great Jewish explosion of comedy. You had, you know, people like Woody Allen and people like, like that's always been Mel Brooks, people like that. You think how many yeah. people he inspired out of that group of people, you know? Yeah. That's the really if you if you want to talk about cultures or race, which I don't think race is, is necessarily I think it's cultures. You need those catalysts, you know, like the British invasion of music, you know. Elvis or, or Muddy Waters or Howlin' Wolf even before that, these Delta Blues guys inspired all these little white English boys yeah. to make this great music. Like, thank God that they inspired this group of people because it is a baseline mm. for all music now. You know, mm. and Lenny Bruce, I, you know, the, the Jewish community has always had a big presence in comedy. You can trace that back probably to him, you know? Yeah. And if I'm wrong, cut this out of the, the interview because well, well, I, I well, don't I, sound stupid. Well, well, I think that you uh, are definitely on to something, man, because, yeah, there's a lot of uh, great Jewish comedians. Seinfeld, I think, is Oh, he Jewish. is, yeah. 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 
But Sandler, I mean, the list goes oh, on. Oh, they've had a huge presence in comedy. Huge presence. Huh. And see, like Lenny, he you know paved the way for a lot of artists to say what they wanted to say. But it, yeah. comedy really didn't start getting crazy until like... Yeah. I guess 70s movies, whenever it comes to Mel Brooks, yeah. the whole Blazing Saddles oh, and all that Still stuff. Still good today. Still good. Still good. Awesome. Did you know that uh, Pryor was supposed to play the sheriff? No, that, that? He, he got a co-writing credit on that. He helped write some of that movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that was apparently there during the time, though, that Pryor was... He said on his uh, close to his deathbed, one of his last interviews, that was his only big regret. Well, they, wow. he's not nicer to people, which I think on your deathbed is probably going to be everyone's regret. Yeah. You know, but... Uh, he wishes the studio wouldn't um, insure him. I think the way the story goes, because he was just too he was, volatile at, at the time. Yeah, he was. And Mel's like, "I'm sorry, I got to get this movie made. They won't let you do it." But the other guy sorry. done a great job, though. Man. Oh, great! I, yeah, I, I got it. Be so good to see Pryor in that, though. What was the other movie that Pryor and uh, uh, Gene were in? Gene Wilder. Oh, uh, Hear No Streak? Evil, See No Evil, Silver Streak. Um, I, yeah, I was thinking of Silver Streak. That's four. a fun movie. What's the one where they're there are prisoners in the rodeo. Mm-hmm. Was that that scene? Oh, yeah. Wasn't it? Um, I don't know, man. But they did several mm-hmm. good movies. Mm-hmm. But the, but uh, well, you had like that, like the craziness with comedy. Whenever it comes to films in the seventies, yeah. But whenever it comes to stand up, the eighties, man, were wild. Well, oh, I guess yeah. like late seventies with Pryor, but then yeah. the eighties, you had Sam Kennison. Yeah. You had people like uh, oh, what is this dude's name? Carlin, George Carlin. Yeah. I don't know why I couldn't think of Carlin, but I mean, the eighties was. It was a wild era, especially with Kennison. That's right. an, that's another uh, comedian that I yeah. like to, that I like to show like younger comedians yeah. that are up and coming. You need to know who Kennison was. Yeah. That dude's backstory, man. Wild. He used to be a southern preacher that's, and very southern sounding. I've listened to some of his old sermons. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. He man. He We're was out there. Yeah. He was. He was. Uh, <laughs> Surprised he wasn't carrying around snakes like the stuff he says. <laughs> but man went on to be one of the most vulgar wild oh, comedians yeah. that the world has ever seen. Like yeah. he was he was more of a rock star than he was a yeah. comedian. Oh, he done several songs. Like, yeah, Wild Thing. Yeah, yeah that was yeah. the big one. He was. But man, the whole uh sh- the, the dead people joke, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can't even say that. And those that people joke. like those people will eventually be canceled. You, you I, I'm afraid we're going to get to a point in this society and you've already done it with Kennison. You never see him on mainstream anything. They never no. award him anything, nothing. And you're going to get that stuff out, but you've got to see the seed of what that, you know. I always tell people, going to music, I know we're jumping around, but I say there was four things that changed everything. And there's a there's hundred things before these four, but kind of in modern history. You had the Elvis changed everything. No one had ever been a rock star before. No one had ever made that kind of money. No one ever had a career like that. Then you had the Beatles. No one produced their own material at that rate and just became that popular. Then you had Michael, the advent of music videos and MTV and there was a time and place where you had to have a supreme talent at that time yeah. and then like I said with Garth Brooks and you look at the waves from which those four people made in the last 70, 80 years it, it's inspired everything so when you start cutting things out of society like Kennison stuff well you don't get those waves anymore if yeah. you cut him out you don't get the next Kennison and we all enjoyed the Kennison so why don't we, why can't we have another one yeah you know well, well well the whole cancel culture thing it's I, I know that they're trying to do good but sometimes they're like they're overdoing it almost yeah. oh, See, it's insane. <clears throat> well this there's this one experience that I had in Huntington at this I'm, I'm not going to name the establishment or anything like that because there's still a lot of good comedians that go there and yeah it's a good place it wasn't their fault but the guy it was the guy that was hosting the show uh I told a very risque joke I don't even want to like Tell yeah. the two types of people that it included, <laughs> but the, uh, the 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 two types of people that it included, I got friends that are in yeah. both of those categories, and I ran the joke by them, yeah. wanting to see like if I if I have a joke like that, that's about a uh, yeah. just a certain type of people. I have I, I know a lot of people, so yeah. I'll run the jokes by them, see what's accurate, see if I can work it out a little bit more, say or just even see if I shouldn't say it at all. Yeah, I, I like to do that and. I got the okay from a lot of them, you know, yeah. and there was even some in the crowd that night, yeah. and they were laughing hysterically, like yeah. they were like really like enjoying mm-hmm. the show. And this, the host, I guess, was just this social justice warrior. And yeah. as soon as I got off the stage, I had a good vibes shirt on. Yeah, he's like, well, that was a lot of hate speech from somebody who has a good vibe shirt on. I'm like, dude, yeah. everybody that I was joking around about in the joke. 
in the crowd yeah. is laughing. Yeah. They are enjoying it. You are you don't even fit in any of those categories, yeah. and you're the one hating on it. Like, yeah. a lot of people will try to stand up for people that are actually enjoying the comedy. Yeah. And it's that's not the battlefield for that. It just no. isn't. And, and and stand up, man. Like I, I know that uh, it, it's a very risque uh, art form, and yeah. it, it, some people do get offended. But like you uh, mentioned earlier, you're working on the joke. Yeah. You 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 don't know. I mean, like what? Even Chris Rock is a great example. If five people laugh and ten people get mad, well, maybe I don't need to say this joke. But damn it, it's funny, or they wouldn't have laughed. Like exactly. it's funny to somebody. Yeah. You know, it's funny it, somewhere. Yeah, and, and like even at that one show, the Wonderlust show that I was talking yeah. about, like there was this group of like what looked like college kids in the back, and yeah. they were cracking up laughing. You know, the yeah. uh, seventy year old grandma in front of me wasn't <laughs> wasn't, yeah. but people enjoy different things, man. Like I don't re- really like. I don't know classical music, yeah. but there's some people out there that love oh, it. Absolutely, you, know? you don't have to laugh, you, even if you. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. It, I love stand up, and I'm not going out to try to offend people, but people don't need to take it so personal. Yeah, a lot of the yeah. times, it's just joking around. Yeah, that's what yeah. it is. Is jokes. I don't believe half the stuff that I'm saying, but I'm saying it because it's outrageous it's an angle. or it's funny. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes it's like, well, like you just said, it's an angle. It may make yeah. you think differently. Yeah. You know, Kennison, another great example, buddy. He. Uh, had some crazy jokes, but it it made yeah. you think. And there's also if as long as there's truth to it, yeah, it's funny because well, you, it's funny because it's true. You take self deprivation, or you know, people are well, people make fun of themselves. There's a reason people do it. You know, if if Pryor's making fun of himself, it's not because he thinks to himself all those things. It's because it's funny. Exactly, and it's because it works. That's that's uh, self depreciating. I guess is what I meant to say, but. Uh, that's why it works. And I always liked Kevin Hart when they tried to take um, that award ceremony from him. They said, well, he told a bunch of, of jokes against the homosexual community. He's like, I don't care. They're funny. He's like, well, you can't host. He's like, I don't care if they were funny. Yes. And, that, and that's you know, what they need like, to be, man. No one cares. He's like, you've got to. Some people have to start standing up. And, you know, Eddie Murphy had a joke like that where he said that he did a whole, this is probably back on Raw. Oh, are you talking about uh, the Bill Cosby When Bill one? Cosby called yes, him, told him to stop telling them jokes, and then he called Richard, and Richard's like, do people laugh? And then tell Bill Cosby to shut up. <laughs> yeah, He's it like, is, man. Yeah. I, I love that joke because it's so true. It's probably real. It probably really happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah I, I believe it. It's just yeah. funny, though, how I think Bill I think Bill Cosby was mad about his cussing or something yeah. like that. Oh, you don't need to cuss so <laughs> much. Or, but and yeah, he done all the horrible things that he did. Yeah. A lot of hypocrisy in the world nowadays. We're all bad people, man. Like, yeah, are we man. not? Well, that's well, what kills and, and me, And sometimes man. That's, what, uh, that's what some people may not like about a joke yeah. is like it makes them realize that they're a little bit of a messed up person, yeah. too. I mean, if you keep pushing the good bar, because good and bad, I don't think it's a real thing. I think there's, I don't, th- I don't even know if good and evil's real. I know that sounds crazy, but like there's things that I see and I'm like, I hate that. I just wish that never existed. But like, I think if you get into people and like, and you accept things, it's like when mothers, and you see this a lot in this place because you are in Eastern Kentucky because you have a lot of drug addiction. You'll see mothers accept things from from sons that went, you know, astray. That they would never accept from generalized society. So why mm-hmm. did you accept that there? You, why do you not see that as evil? You know, exactly. and I think it's because it's all perspective and who you are. And I think we're all kind of messed up. We've all yeah. done. Th- there's a ton of regret I have in my life. I've always lived very fast and and I've went and done and I didn't ask questions. I didn't worry about how it affected people. And I look back now as I get older and you know I have a wife now and and I have my daughter and stuff and uh, it makes me think, man, I wish I'd never done that, but. You that, learn though, and it wasn't me. Now you know that was, yeah. you know. Well, that, that's one funny thing about the whole Kevin Hart thing. Well, first off, the joke was funny. I remember, oh, I, I, I remember the joke. The yeah. whole him hitting his son over the head with a dollhouse. Yeah, it's hilarious. But uh, see, that's the thing. Like most jokes, they're just outrageous. Yeah. He would never actually hit his kid over the no. head with a dollhouse because of that. Yeah. It's just stupid and funny. Yeah. But uh, I forgot where I was going with that. What were we talking about? I was just talking about censorship. I think and. And how people are uh, well, judgmental. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, you, see, that was like 10 years ago or something crazy yeah. like that. It was a really long time ago. Yeah. He's a totally different person now. That was 10 Re- years ago. Retrospective cancel culture is even worse. That is wild, man, that people yeah. are getting... Now, I, I, I can understand like if it's something really, really, really bad, like the whole Bill Cosby thing. Yeah. But just because somebody said something 
stupid in the 80s, yeah. you know? I mean, it's well, like... It, it's kept Eddie Murphy off stage. Maybe one of your top 10 comedians of all time. Yeah. He specifically said multiple times, and I actually watched a Kevin Hart interview the other day where they were asking, why is Eddie... On, on never, Stern? Yeah, yeah. yeah and he's yeah, like, why is Eddie not on stage? And he's like, Eddie's afraid people, you know, he can't be himself, he can't talk. Yeah. And it's because of all the flack he's caught from the stuff he said in the 80s. Yeah, exactly. I mean... Well, that's the whole reason why Chappelle has uh, people yeah. lock their phones up at his show, and it's... It's really helped him a lot too because yeah. I've been to a few and uh, yeah I'm glad there wasn't somebody there with a the video camera. Yeah, Ooh. but it's but people love it and they have a good time. Yeah, you just have this. It's the freaking internet, man. Yeah. It is. I don't think that you would have any of this cancel culture stuff yeah. if it wasn't for the internet. Whenever it comes to stand up comedy, yeah, some people absolutely deserve it, but in some cases, a joke is a joke, and stand up is not for everybody. Just yeah. like country music isn't for everybody. Yeah, it's not made for everybody. Yeah, exactly. You know, so I mean, I don't like I don't like Florida Georgia Line, yeah. but I'm not going to get them banned off off of radio yeah. and all that stuff. Well, it's like the Mor- Morgan Wallen thing. It happened. I was like, oh, okay. I was like, so you should tell me somebody who I've never I never heard of him at that point. I never listened to him, yeah. and I damn sure never met him. Like that guy cannot affect my life with any sound he made out of his mouth. Like that's yeah. not how it works. I just, I, you know, and you have to like really like see what you care about yeah. in life. Yeah. I don't care. I don't yeah. care about Morgan Wallen. I don't have a. No. I don't own any of his music on my phone. I don't yeah. listen to the dude. I don't care. But yeah. some people, it's a. Uh, it's it's Facebook a lot too. Yeah, social media will be the great downfall of it all. I mean, yeah. you've seen revolutions caused by Facebook in in other countries. You know, Egypt with Muammar Gaddafi that started as a Facebook group. Yeah. Like. It's, it's wild, man. Like, that's a dangerous thing. But but it, it kind of is mind control to people. Like, uh, I remember one time last year during, like, all the craziness that was going on with Portland. Yeah. They were some protesters, like, blocking the way to a hospital. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm not going to say who it was, but a family member called me. Yeah. And uh, they were just going off about it. And I'm like, are they at PMC? Yeah. Are they at ARH? Yeah. Are they at the hospital right down the street? No. They're yeah. on the totally different side of the United States. Why do you care? Yeah. Why does it matter? It doesn't. Like, yeah. be careful what you pick and choose and care about in your life. Well, I said that for years, man. People that would post and this charity and, and do this and this and whatever institution that came from. And I think, well, what have you done in your own community? There's homeless people here. Like, yeah. there's injustice going on here. You know, we don't necessarily deal with racism as much here, but nepotism is rampant in this area. I mean, it's who you know. It really is. And you ain't doing nothing for that. So why why are you worried about what's happening in San Diego or something, you know, or exactly, you know, or Sacramento or, or Oregon anywhere? Yeah. Why? Why do you care? Watch more local news Absolutely. than na- national news, folks. But I, I wanted to mention this before we uh, closed because yeah. I know you came here to promote this. It happens every time, man. You, <laughs> people will be here to promote something. We go off on these yeah, tangents. Yeah. But I heard that you're coming out with a new single. Absolutely. We did one. Uh, it's a single called Hand of the Devil. And um, we had uh, – I'm not the only singer on it. We've got uh, Megan Atkins. She oh. came in and did this soulful introduction to the song. It's amazing. We had Nam- Natalie Thompson, the – violinist she okay, come yeah, on yeah, oh yeah, man I, I liked her page last night man she's good she's so and she's such a doll like uh she's i when i first met her she came in and she's a little bitty thing and she was talking to us and uh we were trying to focus on the music and we were all serious and we you know, were tired and stuff yeah. and she just would be like what do you guys think about kentucky basketball we're like and then within two minutes of personality like that, we're all just talking about whatever. Yeah. I was like, that's a, a powerful personality. But she's great. She does a dueling solo portion with Kevin's guitar. I'm telling you, this is one you want to listen to, not just because we did it. It's that's a good wild, one. Man. I like it. A violin and a guitar both going yeah. at the same time. Yeah. That's cool, man. So, uh, Hand, yeah. Hand of the Devil. That's a that's a good name right there, too. Yeah. How we were talking earlier about how you give like these poetic titles to the songs. I'm so bad at it, that's, man. It's good, though, man. I dig it because yeah. it's, uh, I, I like when music has a deep meaning. Yeah. It's, well, John, I know, I don't know how much time we got, but John told me, John Chaney, the guy produced first album, he would look through an album track and he'll pick a song to listen to when he sees a new album. And it's on that title, but it's not the name of the album. It's not what he listens to. It's not, it's, he picks it, you know. So mm-hmm. he's always pushed, make something interesting. Make me want to listen to that song, you know. Yeah. And uh, I had a song called Chase the Sun, and he was like, I have no idea what this song's about, but I'm going to listen to it. I'm going to listen to it before I listen to any of his other stuff, you know. Yeah. So 
That's awesome. But man. yeah, we'll, we'll we'll send it to you and hopefully do, you can. Do you know when it's uh, going to be out or anything? Well, it's going to be released. Not t- it's two weeks exactly from today. I think it's the nineteenth of February. Okay, and that's when it's Spotify and everything. But we're going to send out some copies now. Hopefully, I can get one to you and yeah, some other man. people and let play it now. I'm good with it. Let's, you know. Do you, do you got a video and stuff with it? Well, I tell you what, I was thinking. I kept trying to put a video together in my head of what to do with it, and it's kind of a complex song that deals with a lot of tough stuff. And then I watched the Haley episode here, and I'm totally going to hit her sister up to do me an animated video. Hey, Lumix so. is awesome. And she finally made a Facebook page. It's yeah. Lumix Productions. People can go look it up. Yeah. Man, she does phenomenal. I think it would be it would be the answer to what I've been searching for. I've been trying to figure out how to video this 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 song, and that I think that's it. So for the people that uh, want to check out everything of Montgomery and the Phoenix Holding Company yeah. and the new single and all the good yeah. stuff they have going on in 2021, how do yeah. they do that? Come to Facebook. I mean, we run everything through Facebook. The drummer's got an Instagram page. I don't fool that stuff very often, but we always post stuff on Facebook. I've got, I wrote a song about hating Facebook and posting on Facebook. So we put everything <laughs> there. You know, it's kind of some of the stuff we've talked about today, how, how terrible society is on, on, on stuff like that. But yeah, we'll be playing with Haley and them uh, April 14th, I think. And we post everything there, all the shows, and there's going to be a ton to come. This weekend, we just got, I guess it broke this weekend was the weekend. We started getting calls and messages and emails. Now's the time. Let's book. Let's go. Where you all at? It's finally starting to feel I normal so. again, man. I think so. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's good. 2021 is finally starting to uh, feel like a good year. Yeah. Lift the fog of sorts. Exactly, yeah. man. But, hey, dude, it's been a pleasure. And Absolutely. anytime you want to come back up, man, uh, just come on back up. Because there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about, but we'll make it for next time. Absolutely. Well, thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Boom. Dude, that was awesome. Thanks, man. And I can hear the wind as it's blowing through the trees. And I can feel the hand of the devil reach for me. But it's all a state of mind When you're laying it on the line Keep pushing and you'll find That that train The train keeps rolling on
Dollar Steel.